title for my presentation is Formulation of Antimicrobial Peptides. Uh, before I get to the, to the actual presentation, I would, would just like to briefly introduce the research institute where I'm working. It's called SP, and I don't think you're so familiar with our research institute. It's a technical research institute of Sweden. It's a polytechnical research institute, and we're uh, acting to bridge the gap between, between the industry and the university. Uh, so all the research that we do is applied in and in close collaboration with industrial partners and with, with universities. Uh, I am from a unit uh, called the Chemistry, Materials and Surfaces, uh, working with, uh, with the research within the, in the life science area and surface chemistry. And surface chemistry is something that's very uh, related to, to infectious diseases and the topic for these conferences when it comes to, for example, cleaning applications, hygiene, hygiene applications, also absorption phenomena. How to, how to prevent absorption to materials and also promote absorption. And we have several projects uh, uh, working, uh, dealing with uh, hospital acquired infections and how to prevent spreading of these infections through cleaning procedures, but also development of the new innovative textile materials to prevent um, uh, absorption of, uh, of bacteria to these, to these materials. Yeah. And we're also working, it's also related to uh, to the interaction with the biological uh, interfaces, such as the body and also formulation, which I will get back to. Uh, so when it comes to, to the topic for today, as we have heur heard uh, this morning, uh, Janet uh, presented very well the problem with, uh, with antibiotic uh, resistance and the spread of multi-resistant bacteria. Uh, there have very been very few new types of antibiotics developed during the past 30 years. Uh, there is also a misuse of the antibiotics that we have today, which we of course need to, to, to stop, uh, both for, for human use but also in agricultural applications. Uh, and we also need new diagnostic tools. But another aspect is that we do need to find new, uh, new uh, antibiotics and new treatment strategies. Uh, and in this context, antimicrobial peptides are uh, interesting. Uh, these are peptides that are present in, in our body and in many other uh, species and animals. They are a part of our immune system. Uh, they are uh, highly concentrated in, in the, the organs that are exposed to uh, bacteria. Uh, this uh, illustrates the skin and the uh, uh, antimicrobial peptides in the skin, the figure. Uh, and these peptides have been very well preserved during the evolution. Uh, up until today, around 2,400 peptides, AMPs, have been identified, and the number is constantly increasing. So why are these uh, promising alternative then? Uh, well, they act mainly by breaking down the bacterial membrane. And this is a very fast and non-specific mechanism of action, uh, which means that the bacteria will not be as prone to develop resistance, resistance compared to other actives. <coughs> and the, the exact mechanism of action uh, is dependent on the properties of the peptides. Uh, I did my, my thesis on that part, so if you have questions, I could talk about that for a long time, but I will not go <laughs> into the details. Uh, but some, some uh, different alternative uh, ways of breaking down the bacterial membranes are illustrated in this figure. Uh, the peptide properties influence how they are acting. Uh, for example, the size, the charge, and the hydrophobicity of the, of the peptides are very important parameters. Uh, what's also important to consider is that they are actually selective towards the bacterial membranes and not toxic to our cells. So that's something that you always have to, have to bear in mind when you work with these peptides. Uh, they also have uh, many other functions. Uh, for example, they are important for wound he healing and they recruit different cells in the immune systems. So they have m many other functions in the body. Uh, when it comes to antimicrobial peptides in drug delivery, uh, there have been several uh, pep AMPs in clinical trials, but there are still no products on the market. Uh, and uh, the research has been ongoing for several years. Uh, this is due to problems with the, st with the stability of the peptides, both the chemical stability during storage and also the fertility 
degradation that took place when you had them in your, in your body. Uh, there's also a problem of the efficiency, uh, toxicity, as I mentioned, and also the high costs, which is very important to consider also at this stage. Um, all these problems is something that could be, could be overcome by designing the formulation of the peptide, which means that you, uh, you uh, prepare the, the, the drug in such a way that you increase the efficiency of the peptide and stability of the peptide uh, by choosing the, the right components in your product. And it can also be overcome by local um, delivery instead of systemic delivery of, of the peptide. Uh, the issue with formulation uh, has not really been addressed so much in research. Uh, this is a, a table with the different, different formulations for, uh, for antimicrobial peptides on the skin, uh, all based on polymers, but in this case the formulation has not been, been in focus, it's more the, the effect of the peptide. Um, some attempts have been made to to um, put these peptides into more advanced systems, and this is an example. Uh, when you have the antimicrobial peptides in nanocarriers, uh, in this case loaded in into misophore silica for implant um, applications. And this is something that is the topic for, for a project that we initiated called Forma, uh, Innovative Nanoformulation of Antimicrobial Peptides. Uh, so this is an uh, FP7 project that started uh, uh, one and a half years ago. Uh, the mission is to develop new sustainable strategies for treatment of infectious diseases based on nanoformulations. And, uh, the, and the idea is that, that we will reduce the progress of multidrug resistant bacteria. Uh, and the project uh, continues until the end of 2017. And it involves 16 partners from uh, different parts of Europe. Uh, we have universities, uh, research institutes, uh, industrial partners, mainly smaller companies who are developing the peptides and the different nanoformulations. We also have uh, regulatory uh, authorities involved in the project, which we think very advantageous to, to increase the regulatory awareness and also um, bring this question up also in their, in their world. Um, so the idea uh, with the project is that we develop nanoformulations of these AMPs to improve the stability, chemical and proteolytic st stability, and also to control and trigger the release to reduce uh, the doses in the formulations and also improve the functionality uh, by, by looking into combination therapies. We are also looking at functional delivery systems for topical, mainly for topical delivery on the skin and for pulmonary delivery. So we are working with local delivery to reduce the exposure. Um, and in the project, we are using well-defined peptides developed by companies involved in the project. They have peptides specifically efficient for, for treatment of tuberculosis and other lung infections and also for, for wound infections. So we're not focusing on developing the new peptides, but rather formulating the peptides. Uh, and then we are designing formulations also in terms of the nanoformulations and the functional final delivery system. Uh, we are looking into the functionality, of course, uh, to make sure that we uh, keep the, the antimicrobial effect of the peptide. Um, and also we're looking quite a lot on, on effect on biofilms, which is a huge problem when it comes to, for example, bone wound infection and cystic fibrosis. Uh, we are looking both in vitro and in vivo. And then we're looking at the toxicity uh, to make sure that when we formulate peptides and to do, do these nanopairs that they don't become more toxic. Um, and stability is of course a, a key uh, part of the project and the regulatory awareness. Uh, and also we also have a, a part that's working on preparation for chemistry manufacture and control. So the idea is with the project is that when we're finished, we will have a prototype, prototypes that are candidates for clinical trials. So it's quite uh, challenging, a lot of work that we're, we're doing and going to do. Um, we have uh, decided to work on, on a large number of different types of carriers. 
to make sure that we can, can meet the goal of the project, find, find both uh, topical and preliminary applications and also different types of peptides. Um, and I will not go into the details here, but we're looking into uh, different lipid-based um, carriers, uh, lipid nanocapsules, which there was two papers on yesterday. If you want to hear more about those, you can talk to Nada and Ankle who are sitting here today. Um, and um, other li lipid-based systems, which I will get back to. Uh, microgel, polymer-based systems, dendromeres, and also metaphors, uh, silica particles. And they have different advantages um, for different, different applications. And in our group in SP, we are mainly focused on uh, these lipid self-assembly systems uh, and also on, uh, on designing the functional delivery systems. So I will go through not detailed results, but a bit more descriptions on how we are working around the, the development of these formulations for these lipid self-assembly systems. Um, and these are three different uh, types of lipid crystalline phases. Uh, that you can form by, by uh, tuning the composition of the particles. And when you, um, and what we see in this figure is the, the bulk structures and what happens with these when you disperse them in excess water. Then you get these nanoparticles with these specific structures that can host different types of molecules. And you can uh, fine tune the structure in order to get the right release rate and encapsulation rate and so on. That, that's the idea. Um, these type of carriers have been used for loading of peptides in many other applications, not for antimicrobial peptides, but for, for other, other drugs, for both oral delivery, intravenous delivery, and for topical delivery. And they have been shown to, to increase the bioavailability and also promote the sustained release of the drug. Uh, we you can also see that uh, uh, the, the carriers can reduce the toxicity and skin irritation when it comes to the topical system. So they are pro promising for drug delivery. Uh, we're looking into different ways of, of preparing the particles and we are confirming uh, that we get the right structure that we, we are targeting for. Uh, I will not go through the details here. Uh, but we're also looking into how we can load a peptide into these structures, either on the surface or inside the carriers. And we're looking at how it influences the structure and the performance of, of the particles. Um, we are looking also, as I mentioned, on different types of peptides. And, and the peptide itself influences the structures a lot and their performance. So that's because of that, we need to, to cover different, different peptide properties. Um, so we have peptides that are have different secondary structure uh, that are targeted towards different uh, types of bacteria, different shards and hydrophobicity, and we're uh, trying to understand how these influence the properties of, of the carriers and their performance. So the the idea of of the work within the project is that we design the formulations based on both the biophysical properties of, of the nanoparticle, um, how they can um, encapsulate uh, the peptides, uh, how the peptide is absorbed into the particles, how what influence the absorption, what happens when it comes into a body fluid, will it be released too fast or, or too slow and so on, and also how the peptide uh, conformation and performance is um, changing at an interaction. And then we are of course looking into initially the in vitro effects on toxicity, uh, both in terms of antibacterial effects and biofilm degradation. Uh, so to summarize some overall project uh, highlights up until this date, uh, is that we have seen the promising results related to encapsulation efficiency for antimicrobial peptides in different types of nanocarrier systems. We have, uh, by, uh, by these antibacterial uh, assays, seen that the, uh, the activity is preserved in 82% of the cases, uh, and also enhanced in some cases, which we will look into more detail on. Uh, we can also see that uh, the AMPs are protected against uh, toxolytic degradation in, in these uh, carriers. Uh, and we have also 
identified a peptide uh, that is uh, effective against mycobacterium tuberculosis and harmless skin lesions. So that's that's very important. And you can follow the process within the project on our website, which is currently uh, constantly updated, and there will also be some publications coming out later this year. So finally, I would like to, to acknowledge uh, uh, the team that did the full project, of course, which you can see on this image, and also my closest colleagues uh, at ST, and also the other labs that we are collaborating with. And thank you for your attention. Thank you for your excellent explanation about the antimicrobial peptides. Um, are there any questions? How they how they kill the microorganisms? Yeah, they, they are breaking down the the bacterial membrane, so they are absorbed into the membrane surface, and by different different mechanisms going into the membrane and causing them to to leak. Mm. Yeah, but the the yes, but the, but the general mechanism is that they act on the membrane directly, not specific receptors or so. <laughs> from chemical synthesis. Uh, we're doing different uh, different cell studies, uh, MTP assays, for example, and skin irritation studies. We'll, we will also do, uh, do animal uh, studies later on. But they, the peptides that we're using have already been very well characterized in terms of the different types of toxicity assessments. We're looking looking into some immune responses, and we uh, up until now we haven't seen any undesired effects on that. But that's something we're looking into continuously throughout the, the project, of course. Uh, the size of the peptide, they are the ones that we're working with are around 20 to 40 amino acids long. There are of course shorter ones uh, as well, but 40 to 40 is the maximum. And Yes, some of them do, uh, some of them do, and uh, in some cases that's what we, what we want to, for example, with this uh, mycobacterium uh, peptide that is very specific. Uh, for, the, for the skin uh, case, we would like peptides that are more broad spectrum, because you have so many, many bacteria present in those type of wounds. So, but you can, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, it could it could be it could be both definitely, uh, and that's uh, yeah a very <laughs> can go into details on that. But it's uh, yeah it, it's it's both uh, the cell wall uh, and also the other uh, uh, proteins and uh, polymers on the surface of the bacteria that may influence in some cases. Yeah. 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 That's what we're that's what we're doing using uh, peptides derived from from uh, animals and uh, human. The ones that we're working with are synthetic, but they are based on based on uh, the human and as worms, for example. Yeah. Are these peptides uh, produced by the uh, microbial flora which we have now in the brain, or are they produced by the human cells? Uh, they are the, one, the ones that we're using are synthetic. Uh, synthetic. No, no, no. no. Let, let's use yeah. the, the, the thing. conventional flora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the natural ones. They are produced, I think, by the by the human cells. Yeah. yeah. But it, th th there are so many, as I mentioned, 2,400 different. So. They are very. There are many different types. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.
Thank you for giving this free up of space and answering many questions. Thank you very much. The first case.